Hello and welcome to yet another Glyph screencast for YSDN3003 Typeface Design. In this screencast I'm going to focus on the technique and process of fitting your typeface. Uh, all of the theory will have been covered in class during the lecture that's relating to fitting. So I won't really cover, I won't go into detail about the theory, I'll just show you the application of the theory here in the software. How do we actually apply that? Now, you'll have access, <coughs> excuse me, you'll have access to these files that you see here on my screen. These are the source serif and source sans um, raw files that I've taken the, the fitting out of. Remember that when I say fitting, some people refer to this as spacing, which technically isn't a wrong term, but Fitting is the term that type designers use technically when we talk about the, the, the relationship that we give to all of the glyphs in the typeface and the, well, the characters. How do they work together? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fitting exercise with you with the source serif regular and the source sans regular because fitting a sans serif and fitting a serif typeface are two different things. So the sans, I'm going to open up the regular as well, and we're going to look at how this appears when we work with them. There's source sans. Okay, we're going to start with the serif. Now, when you're going through fitting, remember we talked about this uh, a couple different methodologies. There's the, tr the Walter Tracy spacing method, which is a really great way to get started. There are some other methodologies as well. For instance, my teacher, one of my teachers, Herod Unger, actually presented me with this fitting technique, which is a process where you're starting with the O and the N in the lower case. And usually what we care the most about, remember from the lecture, is we're fitting the lower case first because the lower case is going to be the most common uh, usage of your typeface unless you're really designing it as a capital typeface usually the caps and their fitting and their proportions are dictated by what the lowercase is doing they're kind of a servant to the lowercase in a lot of ways because all cap settings are not that frequent really if you look at the percentage of texts and their uses but this would be Herod's method he would have this kind of method where he would take an N, get an N looking nice, get an O looking nice in relationship, and then he would start adding letters between the N and the O, and then O, N, N, O, and putting letters down through, and inserting it in situations like this. So it's a very great system. What you notice really if you start uh, studying this is that there are a lot of different ways that people go about it. I like to present the Tracy spacing system method as a kind of starting point just because I think it's a very simple and basic way to get started. It can allow you to build your fitting rather quickly and I have my own way of going about it where I kind of merge what I've learned from Herod and what I've learned from reading the Tracy spacing method. Okay so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna open up an N and usually what I'm doing when I'm working with fitting is a few different things. In my workspace I definitely have this uh, this preview bar open, that's pretty important, and I like to make it fairly small, so you notice it's smaller than normal. Usually when I'm drawing the type and working on it, I have it about this large, but when I'm doing fitting in particular, I don't want to see the details of the letter here. I want to see the counter form and the space on either side of the letters. That's what I care about, because remember, we're making good word images, and in order to do that, we have to get a comfortable fitting system applied so that all of the type, uh, all of the characters, character images in the typeface will relate and work in harmony with one another, more or less. But remember, fitting is always a compromise, so is kerning. You cannot solve every single issue. That's why there are very specialized fonts for certain things. Okay, now when I get started fitting, the first thing that I do is I think about, okay, how wide is the counter? of that lowercase n that I'm working on, and it's 219. Depends on where you measure it. 
because this is a kind of curved splayed stroke, but it's about 219. And what I want on either side of the end is I want a little bit less than this counter space, especially for a serif type like this, but even for sans serif, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm aiming for a value if I was to go like this, and if I was to take my measurement tool and measure through, sorry, you see, oh, what's going on? 253, I want that to be closer to the 218. If I could get it to be a little bit less, that'd be great. That might be a little too tight. It depends, of course, on what you're doing. This is where fitting will require a lot of testing. And by the way, you should also have adhesion text ready to go because this part of my methodology of fitting involves working with adhesion text. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I already know as an experienced type designer myself, I know that the value of the right of the left side bearing will be more than the value of the right side bearing almost always because remember, we've got this curved shoulder stroke and we've got a straight uh, stem stroke. So what I do is I'm going to, my kind of method is, I work down to a value that I know is already too, I work from a value that I know is too large. So 50 right now on either side, that's way too large a value. I can see that visually. And I try to find how far can I push these characters until they're too tight together. And so one thing I could do is go 10 and then let's do, I don't know, five. Obviously that's way too close together. It doesn't look very nice there. And that's not half of that, that's not a similar counter space. So what I'm going to try is let's try to go to 20 for now and then let's give it 15. It's possible that I'm working with this uh, two, five units separation is possibly too much. That's getting a little bit better. And it should be just a little bit, yeah, it should be about half of this counter space roughly maybe a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try 24 and I'm going to try, I'm going to go to 18 for now. Okay. And that's getting better. And I don't really know exactly how this is working until I get uh, some other characters in there. But yeah, I'm getting a little bit less now than the 219. Maybe that's too much. I could try something like 28 and 22. That's a bit closer. That's getting a little bit more comfortable. Because what I want is I want the letters to have a gravity when they're in a word that they, they, uh, they should have a gravitational pull towards each other. Not too tightly, but they also can't get too far away or else it's going to make the word image incoherent. So I'm going to say this is pretty good for now. It's less than the 219. That's what I wanted. I'm going to throw in an O, and I usually work with things this way. I throw in an O like this. I like this method. And I'll also do something like this. I'll do that, which is what you saw in that Herod sketch. Now, the O should definitely be symmetrical. And right now, you know, 50 units is not terrible, but it's too wide right now. I'm going to try to go to 30 units and see now the thing about fitting is that notice, whoops, notice with the fitting of the O or any of these characters, we're going to see this. I have to get a nice situation where an O looks nice between two upright characters like this. That's essentially what I'm doing. I'm putting curved characters and other characters between upright forms. I kind of test everything between the N's and the O's because they're sort of my most basic and common shapes in the lower case. So I'm gonna have the uh, I'm gonna have a situation like this though where there will be words like noon, spoon, um, loon. We're gonna have words like that where there are double O's and many other double combinations. And it depends on the language too. English, Dutch have a lot of double letter combos. So you would have to fit the typeface so that it is comfortable for those languages. But I think that the O's are too close together at 30. I'm gonna try 40 and see. How that feels and at this stage I'm I'm really I'm using my eye a lot and I'll have to admit 
that uh, you use your eye a lot when you're fitting and when you're developing a typeface in general, your eye does have to develop a sense for what a good fitting relationship is. Right now, this is working pretty well. What this also allows me to do though is because the O is a symmetrical character with symmetrical side bearings, I can look at the N now and say, does this look too tight to this? It might look too tight here, but what does it look like when it's small? It's funny because sometimes when something is small, a letter form, things look fine or things look odd. And when they're really large, they either look, they, maybe they're vice versa. Usually though, the thing is you need to look at the type at a range of sizes, but you also need to target the use case size. So you need to think, am I using this typeface for, the, for reading text on a browser, which is like 1.2M, 1M even, what is that point size going to be? And then I'm trying to develop the typefaces fitting to work well for that situation. I am trying to make it work as well for a scaling size as well as I can, but I can't really control exactly how it's going to look in text and how it's going to look massive like this. That's a little bit harder. Maybe then I'd have to make a display optical size. But we're just doing general fitting application right now. So I think that right now the O is actually working pretty well as a double. I would say maybe give it, does that work better? If I look down here, I think that I'm going to do 42. We can always change these later. Okay. Now the great thing about having a value for O and a value for N is that there are many characters that share those shapes. So if I look at I'm going to make this a bit smaller to see it easier. If I look at source, any of my lowercase alphabet, it's not about the typeface here, the M, the, the U sort of shares the same, but the H on its right-hand side would share the same. Right-hand side is the N, so does the M. In fact, the M shares the same on the left and the right. So what I can actually do is I can enter lowercase n, and it's going to copy that side bearing value that we had on the right hand side. And if I enter N on the right of M, it's going to copy the same side bearing as the N. That's awesome. One thing you might do in glyphs is when you're done drawing something, you might just mark it a color to say these ones have been fit so far. The H, and let's give it an orange color maybe, or blue or something like that. And I'm going to give it N on that side, but I can't give it that on the left side. I'm going to have to figure that one out by fitting it by eye. The U, I'm not going to say that I can fit it the same way as the N. I don't think that's a good way to go about it. But I know that the left-hand side of R would take the same left-hand side as the N, and it's been fit on half. So I'll give it a blue to say that's half done. And I know that for characters like C, E, Q, and D, that it's the same as O on the left hand side and then therefore the B and the P are going to be the same value side bearing value is the right side of the O so let's do it this way this is great now I'm off to a start I know that also we know that from our theory our diagonal characters tend to get a zero value roughly. They might be negative as well, so I'm just going to go zero for now. Just at the moment, because then it's going to allow me to test these characters with other words, and it will help my fitting process if I know that they're done. Okay, now I'd, it's really good to figure out what the lowercase i should be. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do this. My, my beginning string always tends to be this, n, n, and plug the characters in between the n's first. And then I want to see what an O looks like there, and I also like to see stuff like this. Or actually, this is better. I want to see how this character is behaving in that context. Now, an, an I is a weird character. You can't fit the I by just plugging it, uh, plugging in the same values as the n purely. I would probably give the i to start the same value on the uh, 
left hand side just at the beginning but we might change that but on the um, on the right hand side I can't give it the same value as n and I can't really do that just because it actually occupies a little bit more space vertically than n does n cuts back this way over here it carries this kind of counter space going in this direction or I guess you'd think about it in this direction but it's kind of pulling actually this way visually so what I want to do then is I want to say 4n now this value that I'm getting 204 205 in the middle there that's pretty good but I think that usually for i it tends to work better if the values are closer together so I'm gonna say let's keep 28 but that was 22 so let's give this something closer let's give it 26 for now and see how that looks now they look too far apart so it's actually probably that we have to do something like this let's try to make them equal and get them tight together and let's add a little bit of extra there no because now look at this counter space is more open than this one I want these counters to be kind of like even, even, even. So, oops, that is very hard to see. What do we get? 99. So now here's where we're going to get into a situation where we want these values to be different. I want the value that you see between 199, 199, and 204. I want those to be closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say I want it to be a bit tighter. I'm going to tuck that in. And I'm going to make it 17. Now that's working better for the eye. And our ultimate test is always to test it in words. So how about... Uh, no, this is the best word to get started with. Onion. How does onion look as a word? What does it look down very small, reversed? What does it look like as a word? Do you like... Does it feel comfortable to read? I think the eye is actually a little too tight. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to make this 26, and I'm going to make this uh, 20. Now I'm looking at it in a word, and that's the ultimate judge, is how does it look in a word image? Let's make this 19 for now. Or actually, let's make it 21. Okay. So then what I would do is I would just keep going through this kind of cycle. So let's say that I wanted to fit the E. I put the E in here. And in this video, I'm not going to do every character. I'm going to do the character groupings and give you an idea of how this should look. So then there's onion. And what word can I write right now with what I've got? I don't have a great sample size at the moment. But I could do this word. Neon. Or something like that. And what I know about the E is that it's the same on the left as the O, but I need to have a different side-bearing value, I think, than O on its right-hand side. Because if you look at the E right here, it's pulling away from an O. Inside the N, though, it's not too bad. So this is where we get into a compromise situation. I need it to ultimately look good in a word. So I'm judging it by that. If I could get a word... Yeah, it's kind of, well, okay. This is kind of, I can't use a word like that because I don't have the right side of D yet. Okay, let's just try to make it look nice at the moment for here. And this could be a, I think it's a word in some language. How does that look between straights? Now, okay, so what I'm going to try to do is usually I know that the E Actually, the E, sorry, is 50 units. It's pretty open. What if I made it the same as O? Because of the design of this E that has a pretty tight closed-in aperture, this making it the same as O is actually not so bad. It tends, it looks like it actually wants, whoops, to have something like that. And I'm thinking that that actually works pretty well for this typeface. It really is a typeface to typeface basis. What if, what I like to do is say though, what if I took away some more space? Does that make a better word image? It does pull now the E pretty close to the O. So what if it was 38? Oops. I'm always hitting space bar to reflex. 
What if it was 40? Okay, back to 42. And then I'm going to try 46. 46 is definitely pulling too far away. 42 feels a lot more comfortable. I'm going to go 40 and leave it. It's a little bit less than O because of that aperture. Okay. Now, something that you want would maybe have a hard time fitting is something like the D. So we just looked at that. How do you decide on a character like this? That's the thing. It's pretty tough because the D... We have a hard time with D because it has obviously the same round on the left hand side, the bowl, of the, the same as the O, but on the right hand side that's a pretty weird shape. Very open, it leaves a lot of counter space. So it's actually probably going to get a pretty minimum value. I'm going to see what happens though if I go to zero. And what do I see? I see something that fits a lot better now. And I'm going to get some words, so um, I know that that will work. And it would be good to see something like uh, node. That's great. And another word could be something like, uh, well, that's a common sequence. I don't have a, the, fit, the fit apostrophe, so I won't do anything, but we'll pretend it's slang. And, okay, so the thing about fitting this is that I want to know, does it look right as a word? And I think that at zero, it's way too tight. Look at the counter space here of I. It's too tight to this, too tight with this rhythm. So I'm going to give it 10. And that instantly makes that word look better. And what if I gave it 14? The problem is it starts to look weird in a, in a situation like this, because what if I had a word like this? Or actually, sorry, that wouldn't make sense. What if I had a word like um, dome? Because I don't want them to pull too far away. So what if I try six? I think it makes a word like this didn't gonna make that look too close together okay this looks good now the thing is I tend to do this kind of thing where I'm like okay this looks like it's in within the right um, ballpark for lack of a better analogy and I say I'm gonna move on because I really want to get to the point where I can start testing these things in words so and also now I know that the D is ready to go I can right click while I select it make it pink same thing with E and the M, I think I already did. Okay. Now let's try something else. Let's put a T in there. T is a weird character to fit. Because look at it. It's an odd shape. S is going to be fun, and so is the A and the G. Now I like to usually leave words around. So I'll leave some of these words hanging around. Uh, but actually, I can do this now. Sort of. I don't have the apostrophe. Maybe I shouldn't do that, but it, there's a word. And that could be a word as well. You'll notice that it gets a lot easier the more characters you get to invent words. You have to be a bit of a poet at this stage. Now the T is going to be the kind of thing where it has to be fit more by I than by anything else. So I've got a counter relationship to go off of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the T way down. So I know from experience it has to be fit pretty tight. This is a little close, but I think it actually has to be there, and I think we need to open up the right side a lot more. So I'm going to try 20. And then I'm going to try 14. Okay. You're just trying, you're basically thinking to yourself, what is the volume in this area? What's the volume in this area? That's way, I'm going in the wrong direction actually. I should be pulling this in and pushing this one out. So I'm really trying to get a balance here. And how are these words looking? I really care more, to be honest, about what the word image looks like ultimately. So that's what, that's what matters. And 
You also have to think about words that would have something like this. You know, a double T combo, that's common, but I think that's working pretty well. So, oops, let's move on and let's do something that's important, the A, a vowel. Very important in many Latin script languages. Okay, now with the A, once again, you could get started with the right-hand side of the N. So I could say, all right, 22, but I don't think that's going to work because look at all that extra space. It has to be a lot less. So what I'm going to do now is get the right-hand side working. I'm going to go down to 14. And I can do that trick where I measure it in between the side bearings. And that's still a lot of extra space. So, 213, now it's, wait, let's get that measuring cup. That's still a lot of extra space. But now we have to once again consider what's it looking like between an O, and then we will type it out into some words. So, uh, we can get this, actually this would be a good one. And, oh, what's another one? Now, nah, think about it. And we know, though, on the left-hand side, it's going to be a lot larger than the right-hand side. The value, that is. And the serif typeface sans serif is going to be different. But the values for A are going to look a lot different than the values for other characters. So... These ones you do have to treat a little bit differently, but once again, this gravity here, I want this word mean. With the E, it has to work quite well. And that's also a reason why we should test out a word like this, because our E maybe doesn't work that well, actually, and it can be misleading. Okay. So, now once again, if I go down too far, it might be, yeah, that's too far. Okay, nah, no, that's too tight. This is a tedious process. All right, so it feels pretty good. It's making pretty good word images. Another character that you we should talk about is S. I'll make a separate video for fitting capitals and punctuation. Okay, now another, what's, uh, this is a word that's gonna come up. And a sequence too, like a double, a double M, like, we don't have the P fit yet, but imagine Mississippi. Those kind of words really require a lot of double S's. Now, the S can only be fit optically between, within words, like, uh, like, what if we had a word like, uh, I can get a word like that. That's a good one because it gives an S at the start and in the middle of an odd character and a symmetrical character. So with the S, I think that it's actually pretty tight already. I'm going to try giving it 55. Actually, no, sorry. If you look at it in the word season, like this, it's a little bit further away. So I'm going to say, what about 45? And on its right-hand side, what if I went 40? That's a lot better. And it's starting to get to be pretty nice in a double combination. But I think it could be a little bit closer together overall. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to go 42. And I want to try like 36 here. Or even, I want to try 32. Now it's too close on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go back to 36. But I'm going to bring this back. That's too close. Okay. So, once you've figured out your general fitting, and even after, you know, you don't actually have to figure out all your characters at once, because what I tend to do is this. I'll go into adhesion text, and I'll grab the text for characters that I already have. What I'll do is I'll say, let's say I've got the basic ones. I'll grab them, generate the text, and I'll go into another text frame, and I'll put them in here like this, and I'll have a look at them like this. 
and I'll be like, okay, this actually looks good as a pattern of text. Just a little tip, if you go to, oh, it's not info, but it's under glyph preferences. If you want to see your text in a kind of measure like this, in a width, column width like this, you need to go to text view under user settings and enter something like 20,000 because then it'll give you a nice text view width. Otherwise, it'll be a, a string that's too long or too short. So that's a nice way to look at it because you can get a kind of realistic paragraph pattern about you know, seven to nine to 10 characters per line. There are not that many there, but this looks pretty realistic. And what I do though is as I get characters, I'll go and fit the E, I'll add the E, generate the text, grab it, replace it, and throw it in and then see, okay, does the E work nicely in this pattern of text? Then I'll go and grab the A and I'll generate that. So do you see what we're doing? We're building up to a pattern of language. We're not in language yet. We can't actually get real words quite yet. Some of them are. But what I'm trying to do is make sure that does this pattern more or less work well together? Whoops, what happened there? Okay, but what characters do we have? We did the D, the S. We also did the, um, we've got the I, we didn't do the U, we did the, we did the T also. So what I can do is look at the characters I have something for and I can go, okay, how does my fitting look overall as text? If you can make your type look good in text, it's going to look fine in display. It's more or less in most display situations because this is really where the stress gets placed on word images is in a text situation. Remember that you want your spacebar character Right now I didn't change the spacebar character width, but your spacebar, whoops. Oh, okay. Right now the spacebar character, I don't know why it's not showing up. It's 233, that was the default that Adobe, the, the people who worked on this gave it. But you want your spacebar character to be around this value, 233. I would say for what we've done, something more like two. 25 or something I think is actually better for this because we're fitting it we're fitting things a little bit tighter than Adobe fit source they did that on purpose I think for screen use and browser use but so now I zoom out to like does that look like a pattern of text do I see anything jumping out I think that uh, if you look at this situation it does feel like the s is a little too tight to things so I'm going to open it up. I'm going to give it more space on the right and I'm going to give it more space on the left. And that does look better. So then my kind of workflow would be like this. I'll go through this whole process that you just saw me go through. Let's put a G in there. A character you can only really get by fitting it by eye. And uh, okay, so what words can I get with G? Well, I can get missing. Very common in English to have this on the end of a word, so you got to get the G looking nicely there. But also you could have a word like uh, singing. Nice. Okay. So the G, once again, can only be fit by I. And I want to know how does a double G work, because I believe in Dutch there are a lot of double G, or there are some words with double G. Um, but let me go down to something that's pretty narrow. Let's do this. I don't think, and I know that G is not symmetrical on either side. I know that this side has to be a lot less, usually. So notice what I'm doing. I know that getting down to 10 was a little too tight. But, and it, once again, the values are not going to really make too much mathematical sense in relation to the rest of the system. Now, it feels a bit more comfortable in this situation. However, I think that it looks like it's pulling too far away in this situation. Look at how far this G is pulling away. So this needs to be tighter together. 32. You know what? Actually, that's pretty good. I'm going to make this 14. I'm going to look at it down here. Then what I'm going to do is, before I make too much of a decision, I'm going to just throw it into this soup pot. I'm going to go... What happens when I blend you into the pattern of language? Oh, in English, you get words like eggs. 
I should have put eggs in there. There's a good one to test your fitting. Okay. All right. That's actually working pretty well. What this, what fitting will also tell you, and especially what this particular adhesion kind of test will show you, is that as you're going along, it's not only is it going to show you if your fitting works well, it's going to show you if maybe some of the proportions of your lowercase letters right now are not actually jiving very nicely with the entirety of the font, and you need to review the design. Um, a lot of type designers, uh, for instance, Rod McDonald, who taught me uh, quite a bit about type design, would tell me that the real kind of uh, hard design work tends to happen when you're fitting the typeface because you have to make a lot of choices about proportions at that stage. And that's why when I develop a typeface, so uh, this typeface that I'm working on right now, this variable font, as I'm designing it, I'm also figuring out the side bearings as I along the process. So I'm basically fitting as you go or fitting as I go. Uh, and I need to do that for me because it, it actually plays a really large part in the success of the design. It's not just all about aesthetics. It has to work really well as a system. Otherwise, we're just doing lettering and that's not what a font is. Okay, I'm going to cut this video now. And I will have a video on how do we integrate capitals into this? How do we fit punctuation? It'll be much shorter. Okay.